In a previous video, which I've linked below, I discuss the various switching options available in GNS3. I also demonstrated the configuration of Cisco IOS V layer two switches. In this video, I'm going to discuss the GNS3 built-in switch. This is an unmanaged switch. In other words, you can't configure it through the CLI. It provides basic switch functionality to connect devices in a GNS3 topology. Even though you can't configure the switch through the CLI, you can configure the number of ports on the switch and other basic settings, such as making some ports access ports and other ports 802.1Q ports. Now note, it's not running a switch operating system. Everything is emulated from scratch. This means that some protocols could be buggy, so only use this for basic operations. Don't try and set up a VTP domain or a complex spanning tree domain with the switch. It's not gonna support those protocols. But if all you wanna do is connect devices to one another in a GNS3 topology, this is a good choice. The switch is available under the switches category. So select the ether switch and drag it to the workspace. Now in this example, I'm using GNS3 2.0, so I can select where I wanna host the ethernet switch. I'm gonna specify the GNS3 VM and click OK. So once again, in this example, I'm using GNS3 2.0. Now for my host devices, I'll simply use routers running in the GNS3 VM. And we'll do some tests here to see if the ether switch works properly. I'll also bring another router in, which we can use for inter VLAN routing. So here's my basic topology. The first thing I'll do before I connect the devices is configure the switch. So right click on the switch, click configure, and that shows you the various options for configuring the switch. So you could configure the name, you can add additional ports to the switch, so as an example, I could add port eight, which would give me a nine port switch. Or I could delete that port, so I'm back to an eight port switch with port numbers zero to seven. By default, all ports are access ports in VLAN one. Now there is incorrect information on the internet. Some people will tell you that you can't change the port type through this interface. That is incorrect. It is possible to change the port type from access to 802.1Q as an example. So all you do to make that change is double click on the port number, change the type to 802.1Q as an example, and click add. So the port type is now changed. In this example, I'm gonna leave port zero and port one in VLAN one, but to change port two to another VLAN, I'm gonna double click on the port that changes the details over here. I'm gonna change the VLAN to VLAN two, but leave it as an access port and click add. I'll do the same with port three. Double click on it, port number is changed to three. Change the VLAN to two, click add, and the VLAN has now changed. So notice we have VLAN one on port zero and one, VLAN two, on ports two and three, and we are using a native VLAN of one on our 802.1Q trunk. So perhaps we wanna move the hosts to a separate VLAN. So we could put that port in VLAN two, this port on VLAN two, and then simply change the other ports to another VLAN as desired. Click apply to apply your configuration changes and click OK. Now when you hover your mouse over the switch, you'll see the ports that are configured. At the moment, the ports are empty, but we could now start connecting devices to the switch. And I'll put router one and router two on ports zero and one, and router three and four on ports ethernet two and ethernet three. Just remember that the port numbers start 
at zero on the switch. So Ethernet zero, Ethernet one, Ethernet two, Ethernet three. And in this example, I've got Ethernet seven connected to router five, which we could use for inter VLAN routing. When I hover my mouse over any connection, I can see how it's connected. And hovering over the switch once again, we can see how devices are connected. But I could once again right click on the switch, click configure, and I'll be able to see the configuration of the switch. So you can make your topology look pretty. I'm not going to worry about doing that here. What I'll do now is start up the devices. The ether switch is by default on. So just to show you that again, if I power down the routers, they're all powered down. And we can see that in the topology summary, but the switch is powered on. It's not a managed device, so you can't power it on and power it off like you would with a normal device. Notice there's no power options here, but on this device, we do have a power option. There's also no console available on the switch, whereas we do have consoles available on the Cisco routers. I'll open up a console to all the routers. So as an example, we can see that router one has booted, so has router two, and so have the other routers. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to use Cisco routers rather than a device like a VPCS is I want to show you what happens when a broadcast is sent. So on the first router, we can configure an IP address and then no shut to the interface. The interface has now come up, so the router, as an example, will be able to ping itself. On router two, I'll also configure an IP address on the fast Ethernet interface and I'll no shut the interface. And hopefully router two will be able to ping router one. So there you go. So if you remember, router one and router two are in the same VLAN. They both in VLAN two. If you have a problem where your devices can't ping each other, other people would tell you that you have to reboot the entire topology now that may be required in some cases, but otherwise just delete the connection and then reconnect the connection. It's become a lot easier to do those kind of things in GNS3 version two. So by simply doing that now, notice router two can ping router one, but if I deleted that cable, router two would no longer be able to ping router one. So I'll connect the router back again. And router two can ping router one. We could do a debug IP ICMP to prove that. And notice now we see the debugs for the ping. Now what I'm gonna do here is do something you shouldn't typically do. I'm gonna put router three and router four in the same subnet as router two and router one and send a broadcast so that we can prove that the layer two switch is working and also see where traffic actually goes when a broadcast is sent. So router three has got an IP address of 10.1.1.3. Router four, IP address 10.1.1.4. Router four should be able to ping router three. And there we go. So now let's do a test of a broadcast. These four routers are in the same subnet, but we've configured the switch with the first two ports in VLAN two and the second two ports in VLAN three. So router four, when it sends a broadcast, should only get a reply back from router three. But let's test that. So ping 10.1.255. Notice we're getting a reply back from 10.1.1.3. We are not getting a reply back from router one or router two. If we do the same test on router one, ping 
255. We get a reply back from router 2. Because I'm running a debug, we see additional information. I'll turn off debugging and notice now we simply get a reply from router 2. So broadcasts are contained by this GNS3 layer 2 switch. Router 1, when sending a broadcast, only gets a reply back from router 2. So router 1 can ping router 2, but can't ping router 3 because they're in different VLANs. And by the same token, router 1 can't ping router 4. Now one limitation you have with this switch is you can't move ports from one VLAN to another while the ports are connected. So what you could do, if you want to move ports from one VLAN to another, is remove the ports and then configure the switch. So as an example, if I want to move port 2 to VLAN 2, I can double click on the port change the VLAN number, click Add, click Apply, and click OK. And now I can re-cable the switch. So it doesn't give you a nice easy option to move ports from one VLAN to another like you would have with a CLI switch. But in a simple topology like this, it doesn't take very long to recable uh, the topology. So now, on router one, when I send a broadcast, we're getting a reply from router two and router three, because I've moved router three from VLAN three to VLAN two. So router one can ping router three, and notice previously, Router 4 was getting a reply from Router 3 when a broadcast was sent, and it was able to ping Router 3 directly, but now we're not getting any replies to broadcast traffic, and Router 4 is not able to ping Router 3, and again, it's because we've moved Router 3 to VLAN 2. So that's a simple example of how to configure a Layer 2 switch you can also set up inter-VLAN routing between the layer two switch and a router on a stick. So you could simply configure this router for inter-VLAN routing. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If it was of benefit to you, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.